This video will demonstrate the proper method for collecting bacteriological or BACT samples. All public water supplies must collect and submit at least one sample each month to test for total coliform bacteria. While the process is easy, you must be careful to ensure that you don't contaminate the sample during collection. First, have clean hands and relatively clean clothes so that you don't accidentally contaminate the bottle. Find a good spot for sampling. The most ideal tap or spigot is a cold water only tap with no access to hot water. This is because bacteria grow more abundantly in warm water environments. You want a tap that lessens the chance of having bacteria. This means that you should also avoid vertical frost-free hydrants or yard hydrants since these have a buried drain hole which can allow bacteria to enter. Find a clean environment and avoid faucets surrounded by heavy shrubs or plant growth. If collecting your sample outside, avoid poor weather conditions such as strong winds or any precipitation. You don't want airborne bacteria to get into your sample bottle. You'll also want to locate a tap or hose bib that has no inside threads or grooves and, if possible, no outside threads. These areas are common habitats for bacteria. Before collecting your sample, flush the tap fully by opening the valve all of the way and letting the water run several minutes. Three to five minutes is recommended. While flushing, test your water for free and total chlorine residuals or for monochloramine residual, depending upon the disinfectant used if your supply disinfects its water. Write your results on the accompanying sheet. Turn off the water after several minutes and disinfect the tap. You can do this in a number of ways. The two most common methods are using a torch or a bleach spray bottle. Only use a torch if the tap and the plumbing are metal and there is no vinyl siding that can melt like you find on many exterior structures. If using a bleach spray bottle, you may use any dilution desired. A teaspoon of bleach mixed with distilled water is sufficient, but you may use a more concentrated mixture too. The flame disinfection method uses a steadily circulating flame around the opening of the tap or hose bib. Keeping the flame in motion prevents overheating the plumbing fixture, which can melt rubber O-rings at the valve. It's a good idea to direct the flame inside the opening at the tap momentarily as well. A small puff of steam when you turn the faucet back on will ensure that you've applied enough heat. If using the bleach spray method, squirt a mist of bleach water all around the outside of the tap and, again, inside the tap opening too. Be careful to avoid bleaching your clothing. Although both methods are shown here for the sake of demonstration, only one of these methods for disinfecting the tap is needed to ensure a safe sample. Once the disinfection process is complete, gently open the valve on the tap and allow a small but steady stream to flow. Too heavy a flow will cause you to overfill the sample bottle, and too light a flow will cause the filling process to take so long that you might risk a contaminant getting into the bottle. Use a sealed back tea bottle which you receive from the State Department of Health. Bottles include a chemical for neutralizing chlorine, so do not rinse the bottle before collecting your sample. Carefully break the sample bottle seal by pulling down the red tab to remove the shrink wrap. Unscrew the cap and hold it away from the flowing water, facing the same direction as it was when on the bottle. Threads facing downward so that dust does not collect in the cap, which could introduce coliform bacteria to your bottle. Fill the sample bottle between the 100 milliliter line and the 120 milliliter line. If you fill the bottle below the bottom line or above the top line, the sample will be rejected. Carefully recap the bottle. Be sure to not touch the threads on the inside of the cap or over tighten the bottle. Touching the bottle cap threads can introduce bacteria and over tightening the cap might cause the lab to reject the sample which would trigger a replacement sample requirement. This is the perfect time to do a visual inspection. Hold the bottle up to a light source and look at the water inside it. You should not be able to detect any particles in the water. If you can, dump out the water, get another sealed bottle, and collect a new sample. 
If there is anything visible in the water, it will be contaminated and not something that you'll want to send to the lab for analysis. Now that you have a back tea sample that is ready to send to the lab, fill out the top half of the sample sheet that comes with it. The bottom portion is for the department's use. Each sample bottle must have a separate sheet which identifies where the sample was collected and the bottle number that the sheet goes with, among other things. Review instructions that come with each set of bottles for completing the sample sheet. Notice that the time of collection for each sample must be provided in 24-hour or military time. If you collect your sample at 1.30 p.m., for instance, you'll write 13.30 on the sheet. This signals that you mean 1.30 in the afternoon instead of 1.30 in the morning. All back tea samples must arrive at the lab within 30 hours from the time you have collected them. As soon as you collect your samples, send them to the lab. A free courier service pickup is available at county health departments. You can find the schedule of these pickups by contacting your county health department. While sample collection is not rocket science, it does require care. Be attentive to what you are doing. Don't let yourself get distracted. Handle the sample bottle with care, properly disinfect the tap, and prevent contaminants from getting into the bottle during collection. Feel free to direct questions to Missouri Rural Water Association at 573-657-5533. You'll also find us on the web at www.moruralwater.org.